Hello, everyone. Welcome to our morning meditation for those of you who are on the West Coast or afternoon or even late afternoon and evening for those of you who are in Europe. And it's so really wonderful to see not only the West Coast joining here. Um, actually, give me just one moment. I notice I've got this open on another window. So I'm getting a bit of an echo. Okay, all set. So yeah, it's wonderful to see those of you joining from UK and Europe joining as well. So you, those of you in that time zone may already be joining for our European morning sessions with Martin Aylward that we do at, at 8.30 a.m. Uh, European time. So it's wonderful if you're doing this t twice in a day, you're very, very welcome to be here. So for those of you who might be joining for the first time and aren't familiar with what we're offering here, uh, my name is Amy Jacob and I am the co-founder along with Martin Aylward of Sangha Live. And we've been offering weekly meditations each Sunday for the last five years now. We've been doing that pretty regularly. And it's only in the last couple of weeks um, since the really since the, the crisis and uh, the pandemic and people are, are staying at home more and needing this kind of daily support that we've, we've decided to offer a daily meditation. So it's so wonderful, the response from so many people around the world. We're just so um, gratified that, that this is really landing with people and that there's really a great need for it. So thank you all for your participation and, and your support. Um, one other thing I want to mention before I hand it over to Caverly is that these offerings, both the Sunday classes and the daily meditation classes, are offered in a spirit of generosity or uh, mutual generosity, to put it that way. We are offering these freely. We don't require any kind of payment uh, to access the teachings. And uh, all that we uh, request in kind of exchange for that as sort of a mutual support. If, if you feel supported by these teachings, we'd love to ask for your support for us to be able to continue offering these teachings. And I know that not all of you are in a financial position to offer support. So there's really no pressure at all, no pressure at all to offer a donation. But if you do have the means, we'd like to invite you to click the, the little green button either um, at the end of the meditation or at the end of the session and just offer a small um, financial donation in order for us to be able to keep the platforms running, to keep the staff um, uh, paid so that they can respond to all of the support questions that are coming in and we continue to be able to put these on. And it's not only for the platform, it's also a way to support the teacher so that the, so the teacher can also continue teaching in this way. So we're so pleased to have Caverly Morgan with us for the last couple of weeks as our West Coast live meditation teacher. And caverly has been a very strong supporter of our platform and been teaching on our Sundays for quite some time now. And she's also done a couple of longer online courses with us as well. Um, she is the founder and guiding teacher of both Presence Collective and Peace in Schools, which is a nonprofit bringing mindfulness into high schools in the US. And that's just a really incredible work that they're doing. And if you'd like to know a little bit more about the activities that Caverly's involved in to find a little bit more about Presence Collective and Peace in Schools, you can visit her website at caverlymorgan.org. So with that, I'll turn it over to Caverly where we'll have a 30 minute guided meditation and then some time after the meditation for some questions for those of you who want to stick around. Thank you, Kaverly. So great Thank to have you, you with us. So I'll good to see you. To you. Thank you so much. And Jake, one uh, small technical thing and you could answer in the sidebar, I guess. I just realized I'm on Safari this morning. And so maybe you could let me know that I just want to confirm that won't be a problem in terms of like answering questions or anything. I, uh, during the intro, I thought maybe I should change out, but then it, it looked like it would close out and become complicated. So anyway, thank you, Jake. Um, 
It seems to be working now. That's a good sign. Hello. I was going to say good morning, but also good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are. I am uh, just, just deeply honored to be here. Thank you, Jake. Um, as, as I find myself often moved to say, and particularly now, as I often um, also mention such a important time to be focusing on truth, what's important, and liberation together. So thank you for being here. Before I begin today's meditation, I would love to have folks who are coming together to be part of this session, jot a little note in the sidebar, if you would. I would love to hear a word or a phrase, anything you're present to in this moment. Something that's alive for you. As folks who've been practicing with me over this last period of time know, I often will um, allow the meditations to arise out of what's, what's present in the room, if you will. Our virtual Dharma Hall, resilience, tired, gratitude, anxiety, and restlessness, fatigue. Namaste, stress, openness, excited to learn more about the conditioned mind. Okay, good. A wish to vanish, sitting, brings beginner's mind, gratitude, freedom, joy at being back here, anxiety, present, lack of motivation, stressed, anxiety, wanting control, embracing international presence, waking up, tension, sunshine, connection. Thanks, stress, lockdown, and family life. And that the reality of the situation is, is starting to hit you. Friends, thank you. I hope you can feel each other in that. I can. I can. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All the other ones coming in right now, I see you. Thank you. I thought I would begin this Monday weekly experience with a poem. This is Khalil Gibran. And it's entitled Fear. It is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled. From the peaks of the mountains, the long winding road crossing forests and villages. In front of her, she sees an ocean so vast that to enter there seems to be nothing more than to disappear forever but there is no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. The river needs to take the risk of entering the ocean because only then will fear disappear because that's where the river will know it's not about disappearing into the ocean, but of becoming the ocean. Please come into the position that works best for you for our morning or afternoon or evening meditation. becoming the ocean.
as you settle into this experience of stillness. Begin by consciously welcoming whatever is here, like the ocean, just welcoming. Whatever's here. Nothing you need to resist or change. Just consider for a moment how truly radical, unconditional welcoming is. We are not here to get rid of fear. We are not here to get rid of stress, tension. our lack of motivation or our wanting of control. We're not here to get rid of our desire to vanish. We are here to be with much, much like this ocean. Freely expressing itself with cool water, warm water, crashing waves, soft ripples. Many of us are conditioned for, conditioned to have the attention moving around on the surface of the sea, trying to adjust circumstances on the surface. For the purposes of this meditation, allow the attention to drop and to sink into the depths of the sea. Last week, we were 
reflecting as a group on the conditioned mind and the nature of the conditioned mind. So for this meditation, notice the activity of the conditioned mind, thoughts about fear and worry, stress, planning. Notice that activity as a rippling on the surface of the ocean. When we're inside that activity, it feels as though we're separate, we're working hard, we are trying to understand, trying to know, trying to be something, striving, clinging, wanting, grasping. You are not those thoughts. Allow the attention to unhook from being tethered to that activity, to be freed to sink. deeply into the ocean. So we don't have to get rid of the activity of the mind of limitation. The ocean is not offended by that surface movement. It's not disturbed. We can simply allow the attention to sink and rest. Like a river freely opening to the sea. Another image that might speak to you is picture a flashlight for a moment. Notice how the flashlight, this beam of light moves outward from the flashlight and it moves from object to object to object, just depending on where it lands upon. Objects are illuminated. We're habituated for the attention to move in that outward facing direction. 
bouncing from thing to thing to thing, from worry to planning to fear to regret. Now simply allow the light to draw back into its source. Picture turning the flashlight off in slow motion. The light is just drawing back into the flashlight. This is a special flashlight in which when you turn it off, it's not though as though the beam of light disappears. It simply draws back. The pressing of that button simply allows the attention to come back. It's just another way to speak about another metaphor for this sinking that we began with in the ocean. The releasing, the unhooking from the objects of experience. So that there may be rest. Not an asleep to a world rest, but an awake, alive, rest that is illuminated, shining with presence, as presence. Again, from this resting, nowhere you have to go. Nothing you have to do, no one you have to be. Just resting. Just resting in your own being.
simply receiving the gift of your own attention. Attention like the river opening to the sea of awareness. Attention, releasing and surrendering these various thought forms emotions all to this sea of awareness, this unconditionally welcoming sea of awareness softening into the freedom of being. The attention liberated Freed to rest. Notice that inherent in this river releasing into the ocean, inherent is faith. Trust.
the openness of being unsnag, unhindered. as it moves from one form, river, or focused attention, to another form, sea. Open awareness. Open awareness, just like the sea, welcoming unconditionally it all. The only significant difference in terms of this metaphor is that this sea has no shore, no edge, no boundary. It's unlimited, infinite, open, shining, luminous. awareness. Simply resting there. Simply resting here.
friends, thank you. Please take a moment to stretch and allow our breath to move freely through the whole body. Bringing attention back to this physical form, breath moving through lungs, breathing deeply, especially during a time in which many are struggling to breathe freely, not taking our breath for granted. This is the moment in which I have the opportunity to remind you that this platform only exists due to the generosity of others. So donation button, Dink. right below. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you found that meditation inspiring. Yeah, please, please support Worldwide Insight Now Sangha Live in being able to provide inspiration in times of uncertainty it's during these times that I realize we're so lucky that platforms like Sangha Live were ready for this. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for all who worked to support Sangha Live. Thank you, Martin. So we will open it up now. I would love to receive comments, questions, uh, it's an opportunity to engage if this is your first time. Um, thank you, Ellen. If it's your first time on this platform with us, this is an opportunity to, to have an exchange, to, to ask a question, to make a comment. We always have the option of resting in being together. Yes, Eric, the name of the poem, I believe, is as simple as fear, but allow me to double check that. Fear. Khalil Gibran. Not positive I'm saying that name exactly right, but I think I am. So please check that out if you'd like to read it again. Seemed quite timely. Oh, thank you, Karen. I'm, I'm feeling gratitude and appreciation as well. I can't say enough how, how helpful it is to remember that we're in this together helpful to me, hopefully helpful to you. Hmm. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Good morning. How can we best support those who are not finding any center right now? Jackie, the first thing that arises for me is by seeing that they are center. So one thing that can tend to happen is we want to be helpful. We see someone and we project they're out of center and we want to try to help them get back to center and we lose our direct experience of recognizing ourselves as, as centered presence. And then we, um, we start trying to adjust someone else's life experience. And we know in ourselves that we can feel it when someone is trying to, you know, quote unquote, help us in that way. And Jackie, because I, I know you, uh, and, and, and even if I didn't know you, I could say that we can trust that that desire to help is sincere. It simply gets a bit co-opted sometimes by our conditioned processes and one conditioned process that keeps a sense of separation in place is this notion that you should be centered. So let me either talk to you or advise you or preach at you about how you should get there. Jackie, I don't know if this is exactly what you're looking at or, or pointing to, but that's what arises for me around the things I've noticed in myself. It's actually an incredible gift to 
be with the others from that recognition of, of who we are, from the depths of the ocean, if we're going with that analogy, or from the, the light of the flashlight resting in its source. To be with each other, with others from that knowing is a much greater service than the conditioned mind wants to suggest it is. Thank you for chiming in, Jackie. And this really is a chorus here, all of us together. So I appreciate that that phrase chiming in just came. So here's some other chimes. Sandy, I don't feel prepared to deal with the spiny lobsters in the sea, but they're there. And I don't like that big fish eat little fish. What do I do with such thoughts? Thank you, Sandy. It's, it's sweet to continue with this metaphor. My question for you, Sandy, is who, who doesn't like these spiny lobsters? Is it an aspect of the personality with likes and dislikes and preferences and desires and aversions? Or is it this open, vast sea itself? Remember, the sea we're speaking of is unconditionally welcoming. Unconditionally embracing, we could even say. Just embracing whatever, whatever is. You are that. When we are caught in wanting to fix someone, help someone, change someone, when we're caught in wanting to fix someone like ourselves, so first I was referring to an external, but then if we see that oh, I'm, I'm, I'm caught wanting to fix myself, change myself. If we're caught not liking spiny lobsters, we are identified with the conditioned mind. We're caught perceiving ourselves to be that activity, that's simply activity on the surface of the sea. We've forgotten, if you will, our deepest knowing. The knowing of our own being. And what's important to underline about the knowing of that being is that that is where peace and happiness reside. So same, I would respond to the question about not liking um, that big fish eat little fish. I would respond in the same way. Who, who struggles with that? Whoever does, that's not bad or wrong. But it's good to be clear about. So what does the ocean, you asked, what do I do with such thoughts? I would ask, what does the ocean do with spiny lobsters? What does the ocean do with the fact that big fish eat little fish? Thank you, Sandy. Karen, I found it hard today. I have the feeling that 
or I relax, I have the feeling that, or I relax, but I wonder if I shut out the world or I see only the mind busy and body, but do not really, but do not really a center, but go from grabbing to grabbing. What's the balance? Karen, I'm not entirely sure I'm totally following, so I'm going to read again and see if I can feel the heart of your question. I hear that you found it hard. First, let's start with, fine. Thank you for sticking with it. Thank you for staying here, for being with the difficulty. We must remember, friends, ultimately, on a very, very deep level, practice is about cultivating the, the capacity to be with what is. So every time we're with what is wonderful, every time we don't move away in fear or identify with aversion and resistance, wonderful. So I have the feeling that I relax or I have the feeling that or I relax, but I wonder if I shut out the world or I only, I see only the mind busy and body, but do not really a center, but go from grabbing to grabbing. And then I believe you just added or too relaxed or too grabbing. So Karen, I think, and you can comment please if this is it, I think what I hear you looking at is, are we, as we rest in awareness, as we relax in this way, are we running a risk of um, shutting out the world? And I'll start with that. The world, lives in, appears in, arises in this open awareness. So by resting in awareness, we are not shutting out the world. The, the sea is not shutting out um, objects that are being active on the surface of the sea. And we are not shutting out what's happening, the activity on, on the surface of the sea as we allow the attention to sink to the depths of the sea, as we remember the vastness of the sea. So this balance, I think, that you're asking about, we're, we're the balance is not in balancing resting in awareness with being active in the world. The balance that I think you're seeking, Karen, is that you're seeking the recognition that the world rests in awareness. That's the balance. We're not balancing awareness and the world. I hope I'm understanding your question correctly. And even if I'm not, that, that might be a helpful image for many of us. The difference between balancing the world, the activity of the world and awareness versus recognizing that the true balance we seek is to have the experience, the remembrance that the world rests in awareness. Thank you, Karen. Can you suggest ways to address the ego when acknowledging the deep bonds of attachment to both aversion and attraction? Thank you, Alyssa, for this question. In this moment, Alyssa, you know, what's arising is 
that it might be useful to mindfully attend to the way in which we tend to identify with, it goes back to what Jackie started with, this notion that we need to fix or change or address the ego. For right now, simply to go with today's theme, simply acknowledge the activity of the ego as noise on the surface of the sea. It, on the surface of sea, there might be um, there might be a storm. There's clinging. There's aversion. There's attraction. Simply notice all of that activity from and while recognizing where you're noticing that activity from. What's what's the source of that noticing? Sometimes we, we in practice get attached to wanting to work with attachments and work with aversion up on the surface of the sea. So we get into a tangle, but only the ego wants to get into a tangle with the activity of the ego. So for now, instead, simply notice that activity and then ask yourself, from where am I noticing this activity? How is this activity being seen, known, recognized? And then return there. For now. In keeping with this, this theme today. Just come straight back to the source of this open sea. Friends, thank you. I do see that we had, um, oh, I apologize, we have two more questions and I would, I will read them after this call. And as I read them after this call, I will um, look to see whether they could be brought into tomorrow's meditation time together. Thank you again. If you haven't donated, please do. And we, again, as Jake said, we understand if right now is not a time uh, that you can donate, we honor that. No one will be turned away due to lack of funds. I very much hope to see you here tomorrow morning. And uh, yes, please, um, between, between now and then, Tend, tend to this recognition of knowing yourself as this open, unconditionally welcoming sea. Allow the river of your attention to return to its source. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your practice.